this video, I want to cover how to determine the 3D shapes of a molecule. So the 3D shapes of a molecule uh, can take many forms. It depends on it depends on two factors. So there's two factors that go into the uh, determining the shape of a molecule. 3D shapes of a molecule. And so the the only two factors are number one, um, number one the uh, number of lone pairs of electrons number of lone pairs of electrons and the other factor is the number of atoms surrounding the center atom surrounding the center atom so in this case uh, if we had H2O um, if we had the molecule of that, we would uh, represent that as H O H. So, uh, in this case, we if we were referring to the number of atoms surrounding the center atom, we were referring to this atom and this atom. So, in that case, we would have two. So, the easiest and uh, most effective way to determine the shapes of the molecules, I find, is simply to do a table. And so, uh, I'll, I've been included one here and I can show you my method. Okay, so as you can see here this diagram represents uh, the X's are atoms and these are lone pairs of electrons. So these represent lone pairs. So if we're given any molecule, um, the easiest way to determine whether it's tetrahedral, trigonal planar, octahedral is to go like this. So because we have those uh, two factors, then we'll just do a simple diagram. We'll have number of lone pairs. And on this side, we will have the number of, I'll call them valence atoms, even though that's probably not the correct term, uh, number of valence atoms. So like in the H2O, the two H's would be the valence atoms. So in this case, we'll just make a quick table. So the number of lone pairs, as you can see, we can we can have zero lone pairs, but you know we do need at least you know two uh, valence atoms because if we just had you know H two, we would just look like this H H. Obviously, this doesn't have any kind of shape; it's just a line. So no matter how we orient that in three uh, D space or rectilinear space or however you want to say it, uh, it's just going to be a line. So uh, if we have two, then then we have the possibility of it being uh, bent, as in this case. So that means we need to start with two valence atoms. Actually, I'll just move this. I'll put this in a different color, so we'll have uh, we'll have two, and so we can go all the way up to three, four, five, six. I'll go up to six in this case, and the number of lone pairs we can start at zero. We could have one lone pair. We could have two lone pairs, or we could have three. So there is one other thing that we need to define. We have to define the prefixes for the numbers. So the number prefixes. Now we should know, and this is this is very important. We have to know that. Um, I'm just gonna put this in a different color. So we need to know that by equals two and tri equals three. Tetra equals four. And even though octa, or an octa, even though that represents eight, for these purposes and only in these purposes will we refer to this as six. And you'll see why in a few minutes, and you'll kind of understand the intuition of why I'm referring to octa more erroneously as six, um, even though it's it's supposed to be eight. So as you can see here, if we take any number of valence atoms, so let's say we have um, well, let's say we have H2O, then that would be two valence atoms. Oops, two valence atoms, and we would have one lone pair, right, for uh, H2O. So we would have two, let's see, one. So if we look over in this chart, we can see that it would be uh, in one plane, but it would be bent. So we're going to go, because uh, these are trigonal planar. Anything here, trigonal planar is anything over here, tetrahedral, all of these. So like if this was tetrahedral, 
this is tetrahedral, this is tetrahedral. These are kind of like subshapes, sort of. And so if this is bi or trigonal, bipyramidal, then this is all of these will be that as well. Octahedral, these are all octahedral. Anyway, so um, as you can see, if we have two valence atoms and we have one lone pair, then this would be trigonal planar. So I'll just write trigon for short. I'll write trigonal planar. So now let's say we had um, let's say we had three valence atoms, and again, let's say we have zero lone pairs. Well, then we look over here and we say, okay, well here's here's three valence atoms and zero lone pairs. Oh, that's trigonal planar as well. So this is trigonal. And I actually am going to start. Well, I'll write planar. So as you can see, one these two are no. Let's do one more example. Let's say we have. Uh, let's say we have two valence atoms and three lone, or actually, let's say we have two valence atoms and two lone pairs. Two valence atoms, two lone pairs. We look over here and uh, we see that this one has two valence atoms and two lone pairs. So this is tetrahedral. Now you might be wondering, well, how do you come up with this on your own? How, how do you have a system of this when you don't have a reference chart? Well, it's easy because we've defined the prefixes. This one has two, this one has three, you know, four and six. We can say, okay, well, look at, look at this. If we have two and we add one, we got trigonal planar. But what's two plus one? Well, obviously two plus one equals three. Well, what do we have for three? Well, that equals trigonal or tri. So we can assume that if anything equals 3, we'll get trigonal planar. So what if we have 3 and 0? Well, 3 and plus 0 is 3. And if we look over here, tri equals 3. So we're going to have a trigonal planar. All you have to do is count the number of valence atoms and the number of lone pairs. So you just, you just add lone pairs and add the number of valence atoms. Uh, I'm going to write that so you can read it. Number of valence atoms, and that gives you when you match it, and then then match the prefix. And so, just to confirm, like, what if this, I mean, does this work for everything? I mean, we haven't defined what 5 is. So, what if we have, you know, let's say we have three valence atoms and we have two lone pairs. Well, we can't match that with a prefix. But what happens, okay, so this, this is three. We're taking three atoms plus two lone pairs. That equals 5. But if we sub in a prefix for this, if we go try plus by for two, we're just subbing in the prefixes right here, then we're going to get tri plus by. Well, maybe maybe that has something to do with trigonal bipyramidal, middle bipyramidal. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce that properly. But basically, this would be, we're just adding these prefixes. This is going to be trigonal, trigonal by no, that's a that's an I. My mistake. By pyramidal. So we can say that okay, so three plus two, okay, so that's gonna be let's just double check this. Three valence atoms. As you can see, we have three valence atoms and two lone pairs. Total equals five. Then this is going to be I'm just gonna do tri by for short. Then will that work for, say, three lone pairs and two atoms? Well, let's see. We have three lone pairs. We're going to have two valence atoms. Then we look over here and look, we have three valence atoms, or, va or sorry, three lone pairs, two valence atoms, and that is going to be um, tri by as well. So this will this will work. I mean, if we have uh, like for anything, like as you can see, it's either trigonal or uh, like things like that. Like if it's if it has two, like we had two here and we had two lone pairs and two valence electrons, that equals tetrahedral because you know two plus two equals four, and our prefix was four. So uh, now what about octa? So if we have say.
five valence atoms in one lone pair, will we still get the same results? Well, if we have five here, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have one lone pair, total is six. We can say, we can just write this as octa. Will this work for the opposite? I mean, what if we had uh, two lone pairs and say four valence atoms? Well, then we have here two lone pairs, we have one, two, three, four valence atoms. So two and four works as well, we could just write octa. And so you can see, all you have to do is add them, find out what the prefix is, knowing that even though octa is six instead of eight, but you just add these, the lone pairs and the valence atoms. I mean, you can do a Lewis structure first to find out how many lone pairs there are. For instance, um, like with H2O, we can see that because the, there's a lone pair that we're going to have a uh, bent molecule. But if we would just want to know whether it's trigonal planar, all we have to do is add the lone pairs, add the valence electrons. Now, we also have to look at these subshapes because uh, these, sub these are kind of subshapes. I mean, it could be trigonal planar, but is it a bent trigonal planar? Or is it even, or there's like 120 degree angles everywhere? Uh, is there tetrahedrals with a, uh, you know, uh, a lone pair or not? And you can, I mean, really, once you know whether it's tetrahedral and trigonal um, pyramidal, then I think I did pronounce that right, pyramidal, then you can just draw a structure. For instance, octahedral here, if we, if we look at this one here, then to draw that in real life, we're taking one atom, we have a center atom, we're going down, and it's going to be, this is going to be behind, it's going to come in front, and it's going to be like an X. I mean, this is not a very good three-dimensional drawing, but imagine this is, this is being in front, and these are being behind the plane of the page. Then you can kind of draw that and say, well, these are going to be in a plane, and these are going to be sticking out the top. And if we add, you know, uh, square planar, if we look at if we look at this one here, then that's going to be in a square. And the, oops, I'm going to draw this a bit better. And then the lone electron pairs are going to come out the top, but these the atoms here are going to be within the same plane. So you can kind of you know very easily determine whether it's trigonal planar, octahedral, but then you have to use common sense to figure out well these ones are going to be um, in the same plane. They're going to be square planar, um, but there are going to be octahedral as well. But the subshape is going to be square planar, and so. Basi I mean, the basic rules apply. When we're, we're dealing with electrons, and the electrons are trying to repel, so we're just trying to find out what the you know the most common sense um, situation for these atoms to be in, because they're all trying to repel. Like this atom, uh, this atom here is trying to repel this atom, and this atom is trying to repel that. But then they're also trying to repel the lone pairs. And so, as you can see, this is the most stable formation where um, it's the least uh, stress on the electrons. They're they're, they're as far away as possible from each from each other as, as you can go. So anyway, this is this is basically the, uh, the simplest way I think to find out whether or not uh, it's linear or trigonal planar. You don't have to memorize um, the configurations. Just know that if they add up to four, it's going to be tetrahedral. If they add up to six, it's going to be octahedral. And if it goes up to bi, of course, it's going to be you know linear because it only has two, unless it's bent with an electron pair. But that would mean that it would have three. So then it's tries, not by. Anyway, I hope this makes it a bit more simple.